Jesse Punch, Justin Haley, Kaz Growler. Growler or Growler? Growler. Three co-hosts, two couches, one bowl of lug nuts. This is the Pace Lab. 35 weeks of hard-hitting, unapologetic competition, and it all comes down to this. Four drivers, one last chance at earning the title of 2018 NASCAR champion. Hello everyone, I'm Jesse Punch and welcome to the Pace Lap. This is it, the final race of the season. I've said it before and I'll say it again, this year has flown by. But it all comes down to this weekend at Homestead Miami Speedway. Four drivers from each of the three major touring series will be competing for the title of NASCAR champion. Talk about an exciting weekend. Should be an exciting show too, because I have Justin Haley and Kaz Gralla joining me a little bit later to break down all things Miami. But first, some NASCAR news. This past week, NASCAR lost a legend in the racing family. Here's NASCAR.com's Chuck Bush for more information. David Pearson began competing in NASCAR in 1960, winning the Cup Series Rookie of the Year award that season. During a career that spanned three decades, Pearson etched his name in the history books as one of the greatest ever to get behind the wheel of a stock car. His persistent and calculated approach to racing earned him the nickname the Silver Fox from his fellow competitors. With 105 wins, he ranked second on the all-time wins list behind only Richard Petty. One of Pearson's most iconic victories came in the 1976 Daytona 500. While battling Richard Petty on the final lap, the two would crash. But Pearson would manage to recover and ease his damaged car the final few feet to the finish line. While Pearson never competed full-time, he managed to claim the Cup Series championship three times including back-to-back -back titles in 1968 and 69. Pearson's other major accomplishments include being named Driver of the Century by Sports Illustrated in 1999 and his induction into the NASCAR Hall of Fame in 2011. David Pearson was 83 years old. In some more off the track news, plenty of changes heading into this next season. Most recently, it was announced Jeffrey Earnhardt will join a new team next season. He'll run nine Xfinity races with Joe Gibbs Racing, driving the number 18 car. And Martin Truex Jr. and his crew chief, Cole Pern, are officially joining Joe Gibbs Racing. The two will take over the 19 car next season and Ross Chastain will drive the number 42 for Chip Ganassi Racing full-time in the Xfinity Series. He ran three races in the 42 this season and is joining Chip Ganassi Racing after four years with JD Motorsports. The NASCAR Camping World Truck Series was in action this past Friday night, kicking off a very eventful weekend of racing in Phoenix. Playoff contender Noah Gregson started on the pole. He would lead the first 32 laps of the race, but the first caution of the day came out on lap 28. The 17 of Tyler Ankrum and 33 of Jason White spin in turn one, also picking up the four of Todd Gilliland. Tyler Ankrum would recover to finish sixth this race, just his second truck start ever. Restart on lap 31, Brett Moffitt takes the lead and he holds on to it to win stage one. Picking up those stage points, especially favorable for Moffitt, he is still competing in the playoffs. Stage two went to Harrison Burton. Burton led a total of 46 laps this race. Another caution came out on lap 128. This time the eight of John Hunter Nemechek gets loose off of turn four and spins, giving up the lead. The final restart on lap 148, Grant Infinger leads Gregson, but Brett Moffitt cuts across the dog leg and Infinger and Gregson make slight contact off turn two as Moffitt takes the lead, leading the final three laps of the race for the win. His fifth win this season. And with that, Moffitt joins round two winners, Johnny Sauter and Justin Haley, 
and the championship four, along with Noah Gregson, who transfers to the final round on points. Just as the truck playoffs ended with some excitement, the Xfinity playoffs brought plenty to the table as well. John Hunter Nemechek started on the pole, and he would lead the first 20 laps of the race, but the caution came out early. Just lap one, Akinori Ogata got loose in turn two. Lap 21, Justin Allgaier takes over, passing John Hunter Nemechek for the lead. Allgaier would go on to win both stage one and stage two. Lap 145, another caution comes out. This time, the 60 of Ty Majeski spins. But at the same time, Justin Allgaier and John Hunter Nemechek make contact. This is a huge caution, really changing the pace of not only this race, but of the Xfinity Series playoff standings. Lap 108, Christopher Bell takes the lead on the restart, and he leads the final 93 laps for the win. Bell joins Cole Custer, Tyler Reddick, and Daniel Hemrick in the championship four. And much like the rest of the Cup Series playoffs, this past weekend's race at ISM was anything but predictable. Pole winner Kevin Harvick leads the field to green. Harvick led almost the entire first stage until lap 72. He begins slowing down because of a flat tire with just three laps to go in stage one. The lead is then handed over to another playoff driver, Chase Elliott, and Chase Elliott takes stage one. Lap 96, the first of several tire issues. The 22 of Joey Logano spins in turn one, followed by the 14, Clint Boyer on lap 134. He spun out in turn four from tire wear. Lap 144, Kyle Busch takes the lead and he goes on to win stage two. Lap 263, another tire issue. This time, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. hard hit into the wall and his car catches fire in the aftermath. But don't worry, the safety net was dropped and Stenhouse was okay. Restart on lap 269, Kurt Busch battles Eric Jones for the lead. But Denny Hamlin dives to the inside off turn two, making contact with the 41, both spinning and collecting the nine of Chase Elliott and the 88 of Alex Bowman. This incident basically ended the championship hopes for both the 41 and the 19s. Less than 20 laps later on lap 186, Alex Bowman has trouble again, another flat tire and a big fire followed, but just like Stenhouse, Bowman was okay. Lap 301, final restart. Kyle Busch leads Eric Almarola. Almarola in a must-win situation to transfer to Homestead. He hangs on to second for a bit, but eventually fades as Kyle Busch takes off with the win. Harvick and Truex transfer through to Homestead along with Kyle Busch and Joey Logano. Joining me this week for the final time this season is the driver of the number 24 Chevy for GMS Racing, Justin Haley, and the driver of the number 61 Ford for Fury Race Cars, Kaz Gralla. Guys, welcome back. Thanks. You you sound kind of uh, relieved to say it was the last <laughs> time back on the show for this year. Relieved? Can you believe it's already our last week? Yeah, it's uh, the whole season's flown by for sure. It really has. I feel like I've said it. Uh, ever since the playoffs started that it's it's winding down. I can't believe it, but we're actually here now and Homestead is this weekend. It's actually happening. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty crazy. It's uh, I would have never never guessed that come Daytona we'd already be sitting at Homestead. So it's been a good year for both of us though. Well, and uh, I don't know that you might have guessed either that you would be competing for a championship at Homestead. And we're going to get to all of that later. Don't worry. I want to talk about all of your uh, competition this weekend. But first, I want to look back at this past weekend um, in Phoenix at ISM. Not the run that you were hoping for, but you were already locked in to Homestead. Talk to me a little bit about uh, what happened. Yeah, ISM, obviously, it's always been a good truck for uh, me and my, my crew chief. We've just bonded well that, together there, but uh, we've always brought a good package there. You know, we were running up front, qualified second to Noah, another championship contender for this weekend, and 
you know, really running good um, up there, top three, top five. And uh, with about 20 laps to go, I think we were fourth and just had an oil line come loose. Nothing of anyone's doing, it just happens in racing. So uh, better that it happened uh, in a race that really didn't matter to us um, than maybe perhaps this weekend where, where the championship's on the line. Absolutely. You, like I said before, we're already locked into Homestead, so a little less pressure uh, this past weekend at ISM. And we were actually just chatting before we got on camera about this past weekend at ISM and what we uh, did catch from the weekend, what races we saw. And we talked about how we watched the cup race and that incident in stage three, that big crash, Denny Hamlin, Chase Elliott, and uh, Kurt Busch all affected by that one. What did you guys think when you saw that? Three uh, big uh, blows to some playoff contenders. Yeah, that changed everything. I mean, we were looking at the bubble and it was changing in similar ways throughout the race. And then that just completely wiped everything out and reordered it. So that was a, bi a big uh, turning point in the championship there. But it looked to me like Denny just maybe thought he was clear uh, or figured that he would be clear, kind of did a slide job. And uh, sometimes slide jobs don't work out because it's hard to see uh, who you're coming up on. So uh, it just looked like a racing deal. Certainly nobody's uh, fault or intention just kind of happens. Big stakes there for him. I can understand why he would be racing hard against some uh, championship contenders. But you're someone who's competing for the championship. What uh, can you imagine they felt like after that incident? Yeah, obviously, you know, as someone that isn't in the championship race, it always uh, sucks to take out uh, a bunch of championship contenders. And you're looking, and, and after Harvick's penalty, I remember we were on the show a few weeks back, and, and the penalty hadn't come out yet. And we are like, oh, yeah, Harvick's locked in. Lots changed since I saw you the last time. But... Um, you know, for a second there, Harvick wasn't going to be locked in. Chase was running really good, and, and, and things were just kind of shuffling. And then after uh, Denny and, and Kurt got into each other, um, that kind of ended it all, and everything was set. But uh, Eric had a, a late run, Amarola. Um, you know, it was looking kind of good for him for a while. So uh, definitely with this whole playoff format, it, uh, it kept things hot through, throughout the desert out there. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that penalty because we didn't talk about it last time because it came out after the show, but the post-race penalty for a modified spoiler given to the four team changed everything heading into the weekend um, at ISM Raceway. Harvick went from being locked in at Homestead to just points away from the cut line, and really that set up a little bit of a competition between Harvick and Eric Almarola, as you mentioned, and really coming down to the last couple laps of that race, as we saw in the highlight, Almarola was racing for the lead against Kyle Busch. And there was some speculation there from race fans afterwards saying, if you're Kyle Busch, do you let Almarola pass you? Maybe not let him, but do you not race him as hard as you possibly could? Um, given that if Almarola wins the race, Kevin Harvick does not make the championship round at Homestead. Thoughts on that, you guys? Well, I know for a fact Harvick's been the car to beat all year. I mean, there's there's no doubt he's probably, uh, I'm not sure how the seating works out, but I would say just uh, in everyone's minds, he's the, the top prospect going into Homestead. So uh, if I was Kyle Busch, I would have been thinking to myself, maybe maybe it'd be in my best interest to let Al Marola go, because uh, certainly Al Marola's not easy to beat, but Harvick is going to be especially hard to beat uh, this coming weekend. So. If I was Kyle, I would have considered it, but uh, Eric ended up falling back a couple spots anyway, so it kind of shook out the way uh, the way it should have. So I don't think Kyle can really have any regrets, and he won the race. So, I mean, that's always good. You can't turn your nose up at that. Yeah, and, and for me, I mean, Eric, thought, it looked for a second that Eric had the car to just go up there and, and catch Kyle for the win. Um, but for me, I'm different. I want to win. I want to be in Kyle's position and win a race and, and put a stamp on, on uh, Phoenix and and get my team built up and go into Homestead with some momentum. So, um, you know, if Kyle was the car to beat at Phoenix, then uh, why can't he be the car to beat at Homestead? So um, he was definitely a lot faster than Harvick, even though Harvick had some issues. But um, I'm that guy that always wants to win every race I can. So a little uh, difference in opinion there, but neither of them are wrong, neither of them are right. Um, it'll make for an interesting race at Homestead, though, given um, the turnout of the cup race at ISM. Let's talk about Homestead. Like we said before, it's finally here. I feel like we've been looking ahead to Homestead, you and I have for weeks now, because you just keep locking yourself in, but it's time to compete. Are you prepared? Yeah, I'm, I'm about as prepared as I'll ever be. <laughs> um, you know, it, it's been a, a stressful week. There's been a lot going on. Um, had a lot of meetings here and there. Um, 
Chevy, everyone at Chevrolet has been gracious enough to uh, put me and Johnny on the simulator and, and get us some laps on there to, to practice Homestead and been studying quite a bit. So um, I'm ready. I'm just going to go down there. I've, me and my team have had the, the motto all year, you know, you just can't get caught up in, in all the noise. You know, you just got to go down there, execute, do what we've done all year, do what we've done in the playoffs. We've had a 3.0 average finish before the, our mishap in ISM. So it's been a killer playoffs for us, and if we just keep that up, then we should have a fair shot at this championship. There's been a little bit of discussion around this weekend's truck race for the championship, and you and your teammate Johnny Sauter have actually been vocal about your opinion. People have been talking about um, Hattori Racing and their decision whether or not to use the um, NT1 engine or use more of a custom engine. And you are kind of opposed to using a custom engine. Can you explain to viewers that might not understand what this debate is about, why you feel that way? Yeah, just the Elmore Motors um, are, are the new NASCAR spec engine that they came out with this year. And, and uh, some teams like Hattori and KBM throughout the year have, have chose to use OEM um, open motors is what they're called. But at a place like Phoenix, uh, you know, another KBM, I'm pretty sure, um, Derek Krause in the 19 truck. There, there was just some guys using Toyota built motors. And, and uh, I told everyone in the media center, I said, look, it, if we go down to Homestead where tire fall off is, is you know pretty aggressive and there's a lot of tire fall off that's where the open motors have killed us this year um, that's just because when Ilmore and NASCAR get together and they run simulator laps so these Ilmore motors are are brand new this year when we went to ISM that was the first time they'd ever hit the track there so uh, there's no notes on them the notebook is very slim so no one knows what to expect out of them and, and when they run simulator laps um, comparing the two engines um, they made them very similar and I prop NASCAR for doing that and, and we ran uh, the same qualifying times, everyone was very competitive, but when the tires start to fall off, that's something that you can't simulate. And even in a Chevy simulator, uh, where we have millions of dollars put into just a racing simulator, we can't simulate tire fall off. So um, a little later in the run, me and Johnny were getting uh, a little heated because they could start downshifting and, and they would just get a better run up off the corner and alternatively win. So um, this weekend, it looks like everyone's going to be using an Elmore motor and um, that, that should make it fair. Now, Kaz, you are actually running this weekend as well at Homestead, and um, you made a little joke about that on Twitter because it's been, what, four months now since you've been yeah. on an oval? You tweeted this, four months since I've raced on an oval, going back to the basics for this weekend at Homestead Miami. Oval racing for dummies. Now, I don't know if that's a real thing or not, but if it is, that's absolutely hilarious. But what was even more funny was your best friend Justin's response down here to your tweet. He said, we got in some crucial laps around the Homestead Miami Speedway on NASCAR Heat 3 last night. Should help the reacclimation process much quicker for the young 19-year-old rookie hailing from Boston, Massachusetts. <laughs> I don't sense any sarcasm in that response whatsoever, do you? Uh, maybe a little bit. I mean, <laughs> however, he is correct. Honestly, my only preparation going into this weekend, all that I've got to work with is the old trusty NASCAR Heat 3. So we've been getting our laps in and I feel like I'm pretty ready, but uh, Homestead is a very difficult place and it's one that I tested at last year in the truck and raced in the truck and uh, there's no doubt it's probably one of the trickiest places that we go to because there's no other place like it. it. You do it once a year. Atlanta's got a lot of fall off, but Homestead is just a completely different track as far as the grooves you run and the way you have to drive it. So um, I, I'm hoping that I'll be prepared going into the weekend, but obviously it's uh, an advantage for guys who have been racing on ovals all along and they've only had six days since they last did it and I'm working on four months. So it's going to be a challenge, but uh, I'm, I'm up for it and ready to get back behind the wheel finally this it's weekend. Just, it's just like riding a bike. He'll be fine. Yeah, that's right. You just dust off the cobwebs, yeah. hop back in the race car, go 200 miles per hour. It's fine. Do it all the time. <laughs> no, I do want to know, though, you said Homestead is kind of one of a kind, and the grooves you run and the way you run it makes it challenging, but what in particular about that are the largest challenges that are presented at Homestead? Well, I feel like the grip level from the bottom groove to the top groove changes so drastically. And depending on what condition your tires are in, if they're new, if they're old, um, it's a completely different line and approach that you have to run on the racetrack. So uh, it, it's one of those things where you get used to running the bottom on new tires, and then suddenly you have to move all the way to the top, which is an art form in itself running up there. And 
uh, you have to immediately do it, not make a mistake. You make a mistake and you're in the wall and that could potentially end or at least hurt your day. Um, and of course, not only the four championship contenders are in the race, but everybody, all the teams kind of prepare for Homestead, hoping that they'll be in that final four. So everyone's putting their best foot forward and bringing their best car and uh, really trying to, to prepare for it well. So it's, it's a place that you have to kind of be perfect and not make any mistakes because everyone's going to be on their game there. Well, and it's like you said, whether you're racing for the championship or not, Homestead being the final race of the season, you are preparing for next season in a way. You know, this is your last shot in, the, in a car or in a truck to show your sponsors and your team what you have. So a lot on the line, not just for our four championship uh, contenders in each series. Justin, what about you? What are some of the challenges that you are uh, predicting to face at Homestead? Miami's different. It's a different beast than any other mile and a half. And, and you think about it, it, it's not even a mile and a half shape. You know, I feel like almost all mile and a halfs in NASCAR have the D shape, uh, you know, Charlotte, Vegas, they're all very similar. You go to Homestead and, and the closest comparison is Atlanta and it's not even shaped the same. And, and the, the surface is, it has a lot of tire wear, but it's not overly bumpy. And, and like you said, you're, you're on new tires, you're running the very bottom and then the tires wear out in five laps, you're all the way to the top. There's no in between. So you, you, you have to, you know, change your line, change your driving style. There's a lot going on and, and running up close to the wall is a challenge in itself. And I, I think, there's no other perfect fit for championship weekend in Homestead. I think Kaz will agree because it's, it, the track is completely different. We only go there once. Uh, everyone's notebook is super thin there because we don't get a lot of testing anymore. So um, it's a tough weekend and it's tough to go out there and, and with a lot on the line like me, it, it's definitely very hard and, and makes the simulator time that I've gotten to uh, use this, this week uh, a lot more effective. Well, in preparation for this weekend, we had Xfinity Series championship contender Christopher Bell take a few laps in our NASCAR Heat 2 simulator to give us a few tips and tricks on taking on Homestead Miami Speedway. Here we are at Homestead, one of the slickest racetracks we go to. One thing about Homestead is it is really, really worn out. After a couple laps on your tires, it gets super, super slick. And to turn number one on stickers, typically you can run the, the middle to bottom and have a little bit of grip, but that goes away really fast. Homestead is a mile and a half, but it's one of the, it's the only mile and a half that's actually a true oval. So one and two and three and four are actually really similar in shape and banking and they drive pretty similar too. Like I said, on new tires, you can kind of run the middle, get away with it. And then as the tires wear out, you'll want to move up into the second and third groups. And that's a lap around Homestead. Well, Kaz jokes that that, you know, simulator time being NASCAR Heat 3, but hey, NASCAR Heat 3 can help teach you a lot before you get ready to hop onto a track. I learned a lot about the Roval, and I didn't even have to run the Roval, so. <laughs> I do have one more question, actually, for Justin. This actually could be probably one of the most important questions that I've asked you since you've ever been on the pace lap. I feel like this is definitely sarcasm. I hope that it doesn't stump you. What is a Kaz Growla? What is a Kaz Growla? Well, it's a 19-year-old uh, male hailing from Boston, <laughs> Massachusetts. That's a great answer. That's rookie actually contender. Rookie, rookie contender. Rookie contender, yeah. In the NASCAR Xfinity Series. That's that a good is answer. a Kaz Growla. That's accurate. The correct answer, actually. Um, Probably. I'll give you a, I'll give you another answer offset a little okay. a little more personal side of what is a Kaz Grala, but okay. the professional side of me says a 19 year old race car driver. Well, you already know more than a lot of people on the streets of Charlotte, as <laughs> we have found out. Yes, Kaz, we did have a little bit of fun last time you were here. We sent you out to the streets of downtown Charlotte, North Carolina, to ask that same question. Let's see what Charlotte had to say to the question: What is a Kaz Grala? Hey guys, I'm Kaz Grala, driver of the number 61 Ford in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. We're out here today in downtown Charlotte asking people if they know what a Kaz Grala is. First, can you start off with telling us your name? Paul. Dan Chapleton. Elizabeth. Andrew Smith. First question's really hard. What's your name? My name is Ruchira Pokrian. It is really hard because you wouldn't probably understand it. <laughs> I'm not even going to try. That was impressive. I'm Johnny. Hey, I'm Jamie. Catherine. And what do you do for a living, Catherine? I'm a realtor. Oh, well, that makes two. 
Uh, are you familiar with what a casgrala is? Casgrala? A casgrala? Uh, what is the word again? Casgrala? A casgrala? Casgrala. I have no idea. I haven't heard of that, no. No idea. I have no idea. Can you take a stab at what you would think? Like a motor oil? Something that would go into a car's tank to make it faster? Probably name of an animal, maybe. Something like a cat. How do you spell that? Uh, K-A-Z-G-R-A-L-A. A Casgrala, is it a acronym for something? Uh, it has probably something to do with NASCAR, so that, that was a good guess, yeah. Can you use it in a sentence? An engine. I have no idea. It sounds like a mystical wild animal. A mystical wild animal. That is very accurate, actually. Uh, a Casgrala is actually a driver in NASCAR now, and it's me. Oh, really? It's uh, me. It's my name, actually. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, it's a NASCAR driver, actually. Didn't know that. It's me. Oh, well, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. He's actually a NASCAR driver, and that's me talking to you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Kazgrala is actually a NASCAR driver's name. Oh. Oh, that's his full name? Yes, it is. Oh, no, I don't know him. Oh, okay. Well, thank you very much. I'm Kaz Grala. I appreciate the time. Are you Kaz Grala? I am. Oh, well, nice to meet you. <laughs> uh, I appreciate your time. I'm Kaz Grala. It was nice to meet you. What is a Kaz Grala? It's me. We uh, were with NASCAR, and I uh, am a NASCAR driver. That's what we were doing. This. Oh, what was your name again? Nice to meet you, Dan. <laughs> That's the first name or the last name? Kaz is my first name, and Grala is the last name. Hashtag nailed it. Appreciate the time. All right, man. Have a good day. Thanks. What, what number did you drive? What is your car 61. And 61. I will pay attention to that. Well, there you have it, folks. Nobody knows what a Kazgrala is, but uh, it's probably a mystical wild animal. Well, Charlotte didn't exactly have the correct answer that you were looking for. I think my favorite answer was a cat. I liked mystical animal personally. Half those people were on electric scooters. You just rip them off to do the interview? or Yeah, no, that's the key. You jump in front of them oh, and then God. they feel obligated to do the interview. Before we get to the off season, we have a pretty big weekend ahead of us. I want to take a moment to check out the not standings, but our championship four from each series because what we're looking at now the playing field has been even. Points don't matter heading into this weekend. All four drivers are even playing field and really First driver of the four takes the championship. Easy as that. Here's what we're looking at from the Cup Series. These are your four championship contenders. I have to ask you guys, and I'm going to ask you all three times, do you have a pick for this weekend? I mean, that's a tough one. I think, I think the safe pick going into it's Harvick, just because of the season that he's had. But um, I, I think I'll root for Logano, because I think he's a little bit of an underdog. You know, they've talked about the big three all year long and now we've come up with a big four so we'll see if he can go up there and upset some of the top three yeah and, and for me i mean you see the big three are there um harvick you know it was kind of uncertain at times martin truex is kind of uncertain uh you know logano snuck his way in there he's the fourth so um i think i'm gonna have to put my my personal pick where my heart goes is martin truex jr just because a furniture row shutting down it'd be really really cool for that team um out of colorado to to get the win but um you know, I think it's going to be a, a fight between Harvick and, and Bush based on speed. Mm -hmm. Well, and if Martin Truex Jr. picks it up, back-to-back -back championships for MTJ. So could be uh, interesting no matter who wins. There's going to be a story there either way. So let's check out the Xfinity. Here are your four Xfinity Series championship contenders. What about these guys? What do you think? I think it's certainly a different bunch than you probably would have predicted going into the playoffs, and that's, uh, that's going to be pretty interesting to see. But i got to go with Cole Custer. I mean, you might not expect it uh, given the season. I mean, the, the easy pick is Christopher, but um, Cole was so dominant last year at Homestead. He won the race by, I think it was like 16 seconds or 14 seconds. Crazy. Um, so even if the other guys have caught up some over the course of a year, that might only bring them to a couple seconds back, but I think he's got an advantage going into it. Yeah, there's no doubt Cole Custer has it, has Homestead Miami figured out, and, and that's really key for this weekend, getting a championship. Uh, you know, I, I think looking at the whole playoff, all four of them, I, I think Hemrick should be there, Custer should be there, uh, Seabell should be there. I think Tyler Reddick is kind of the, the dark horse pick. Um, you know, I think it probably should be Algaier after the season Algaier had. So I don't think Tyler Reddick should be in it, but 
That's how the playoffs are. And, and my personal pick is going to be Daniel Hemrick. He's a close friend. He was actually really fast at Homestead Miami last year until a battery issue. Um, he was actually in, in the spot to win the championship and, until that. So um, I'm going to go have, have to go with Hemrick. Well, and that's what's so interesting about this final race of the season, this final round essentially of the playoffs is that um, there is no easy pick, like you said, because the playing field is even and all four of these guys are competing on the same level, essentially, and anything can happen. Just like we've seen during the playoffs, it could be um, tire failure, it could be an incident with an engine, really anything can happen. So the whole regular season aside, no matter how many wins these guys have, we'll have to see what happens at Homestead. Oh, yeah. Let's check out the truck. Final four, familiar face up there. We've seen him once or twice on the pace lap. I, ha I hate to ask this because this is a little bit of a weird situation, but um, pick for this weekend? I mean, obviously the big three, Moffat, Sauter, and Gregson are gonna be tough to beat. I mean, I think uh, obviously those three should be in the final four. Um, I don't know about uh, Jay Haley. Um, Not sure you're that but is. I. I think he'll be pretty good too. So um, my my pick is obviously Justin to try to win the championship. But uh, I do think that that Noah's got an advantage going into it. His truck has won quite a few races over the last few years at Homestead. Um, even when Byron was eliminated from the playoffs and not in the final four, he still went and won the race at Homestead. Uh, and of course, that was with Gregson's crew chief. So I think he's going to be the one to beat. Uh, j just based off of uh, historical data, but um, if all year is any indication, I think it's going to be a pretty tight battle between these four. Yeah, and I, I mean, he's trying to put historical data on Noah. Uh, Noah's truck has won a bunch of races at Homestead, but his truck won a bunch of races this year, or, or has not won a bunch of races. He's only won once this mm -hmm. year, and that truck's won, uh, you know, six, seven, eight times in the past. So, um, you know, I would probably rule him out. He, he's probably the one I'm not too worried about. Um, but I'm obviously really worried about my, my teammate Johnny Sauter. Obviously, I'm my own pick um, without <laughs> confidence and, Good guess. and things. You know, I wouldn't be there, but I'm worried about Johnny. He'll be fast. Um, the 16 truck of Brett Moffitt, he's really hit or miss. So I, I don't think uh, they're going to be the best at this track this weekend just based off of some of the other races that are like this. Um, so I think it's going to come down to uh, two GMS teammates. So you think Sauter is your biggest competition this weekend? Interesting. Yeah. I mean, he, he's got himself a championship, the only one here that's a champion. He's got years more experience than any of us. He's, he's been really fast. He's the most winning driver this year in the NASCAR Truck Series, so um, there's really no one else to pick. So did you give him some bad advice at the Chevy Simulator? No, I told him not to hold, hit the wall. Hold it wide open every lap. Yeah. <laughs> try that. Yeah, the thing about me and Johnny is, is we tell each other, you know, we, we try to get each other to to do things that neither of us want to do. So it's always competition back and forth. He's like, no, you hold it wide open. I'm like, no, you hold it wide open. <laughs> So uh, it's been fun with Johnny. Should be more fun this weekend. I do, can we go back to that graphic? Is it possible? Because I do have one more question. We were talking right before we saw this. Um, I, I also want to ask what your pick is as to what we thought Justin was saying while this picture was being taken. I think he was maybe saying, hey, maybe about to sneeze. What do you think, Cass? Yeah, I, no, I don't, I don't, I don't think he got the memo that they were taking a picture. The other three seemed to have, but. They caught me off guard there. It was mid-sentence. But also, um, I look very pale in that photo. <laughs> okay, well, that, okay. It's not now just we're just going to start analyzing everyone's headshots <laughs> Obviously, we from need the, the beginning photo of shop. the year. <laughs> no, I'm just giving you I've a hard I've changed a lot. I've grown, become a man. You have, it's and we've really watched a lot you since they grow tell into yourself here <laughs> yeah, this yeah. season on the Pace Lab. And I yeah. know that our viewers have really, really enjoyed that. And I can't thank you enough for, you. for taking me along on this journey. <laughs> All right. One last weekend of fun. Let's check out the weekend schedule. Probably the most exciting weekend schedule that we've had all season long, if I do say so myself, but um, pretty big weekend at Homestead, Miami this weekend. Starting on Friday with the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series, 200 miles of competition. And four more drivers will compete for the NASCAR Xfinity Series title on Saturday in the Ford EcoBoost 300. And the final race of the season this Sunday, one driver will walk away as the 2018 Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series champion. I guess it's time to wrap this one up. Final pace lap of the season. Thank you guys for a great season. Um, great first season of the Pace Lap. Hopefully you'll join me again next year. Yeah, yeah. it's been great to, to help build the show. 
So appreciate you having me on and give me all the uh, publicity that you have. I do. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I really do. I really do appreciate you guys. And um, it's been fun watching the growth of the show over the season. So, uh, and Justin, best of luck to you this weekend at Homestead. We'll be watching. I know Kaz will be there sitting on your pit box uh, cheering you on. So, should be a good weekend. Yeah, thank you. I'm going to need all the luck I can get. <laughs> Well, for the final time, that's all for this episode of The Face Lap. I'm Jesse Punch here with Kaz Gralla and Justin Haley. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next season.